It's 5.30 a.m. on Sunday the 18th of August and I'm 30 minutes into my 800 kilometre DIY Audax from Bath to Bradford on Avon and back via Blackpool. So I'm at Bitten Station. Next stop is going to be Tewkesbury for breakfast. After that Worcester, Kidderminster, Warrington and my first stop tonight is Preston Travel Lodge at 335 kilometres where I hope to get a few hours sleep, at least a shower and a coffee and some food. Well it's 7.15 now and I've just dived in a bus shelter to shelter from some rain near Lay Hill. I'm doing okay for time, I've done 22 miles so I've averaged in about 13 miles an hour. So I can afford to wait here about 10 minutes or so just to see if I can avoid getting too wet early on. If not, I'll press on after that. Next stop, Tewkesbury, hopefully for breakfast. Well, I'm heading north from Tewkesbury, up through Pershore and the outskirts of Worcester and Kidderminster. Parallel in the M5 though, and I've just come round the corner and seen this amazing side-on view of the Morvins. woken up after three hours sleep at Preston Travel Lodge. So yesterday went really smoothly, leaving Bath at 5am. I had a couple of short spells of rain, including leaving Tewkesbury. I'd had breakfast at Weatherspoons and it was drizzling just as I left, but within five minutes I was out of my cape. Then I made really good progress because there's quite a strong southwesterly wind, so I got blown quite easily actually all up to the Midlands, up to Worcester, Starport on Severn, Kidderminster, Nantwich and then I arrived at the Travel Lodge about quarter to eleven last night, half a mile before there was a Chinese takeaway. I'd researched this so I knew it was really close and it was still open I just got some spring rolls, some mushrooms um, and now I'm just having a coffee trying to get a sandwich down before I do the loop from Preston to Blackpool, Blackpool Tower, then a circuit back to Preston and then I'll start my return leg back down. Slightly west of the route I came out on goes down near the brass borders. <laughs> now 7.30 and I'm sat in Litham St Anne's subway, just had myself a breakfast. So when I left the travel lodge there was quite a substantial direction change to headed west towards the coast and I was really aware of the wind picking up. It's quite hard work. So I got to Blackpool around about 6am I came right in 
outside North Pier, which is my favourite of the three piers, and then float down to Blackpool Tower, just went down the beach and put your foot on the sand. I had a few places in mind for breakfast, none of them were open. I even thought, considered going in the travel lodge and asking if I could have a breakfast in there, just weren't open, they weren't doing breakfast yet. So I headed about 10 miles south down to Lytham, where I just had my breakfast. So maybe a bit about logistics. I found through experience doing these long solo rides by myself that I organised that the first night is fairly easy to gauge where you're going to stay. You're either going to arrive there ahead of schedule or behind schedule. The second night is sometimes easy to gauge, but after that it's just pointless. You might as well bring a busy bag and stay flexible. So that's what I'm doing today actually, even though it's just a second night. I'm heading for the point, whether I get there or not, I don't know. And I'll think about Vivian somewhere in Herefordshire. If I get to Hereford, it'd be great, but I somehow don't think I will because the wind looks like it's really picking up. It'd be really nice to wake up tomorrow morning and have just literally about 100 miles left to go. Less than 100 miles would be a bonus. And the other thing about the routes, if you look at the whole route, there's quite a few overlaps, especially north of Northwich. So I can never guarantee not going off route, and I can't guarantee being diverted and maybe getting lost. But what I can do is minimise the chance of making mistakes through my own routes. So what I've done in this case, again I've learned this through experience, I've made three separate files from rides, so I've had Bath to Blackpool, I've now just started my second route, Blackpool back to Bath, so there's just no overlaps when you do it that way, so there's no confusion when you get to Junction, shall I go this way or that, and then the third route would just be the final circuit from Bath. I find that works for me anyway, my Garmin can be confusing sometimes when there's overlaps and crossovers so I don't know how other people find it on different devices but I find that's what works best for me. Well it's now 8am on Monday the 19th of August. I've just had breakfast in a subway at St Anne's by the Sea and I'm now riding down the Esplanade of Lytham St Anne's. Doesn't get much better than this. So on the route back from Blackpool to Bath and then the final circuit Bath, Bradford on Avon back to Bath there were large sections where I just did not have the time or the energy to actually film. I took pictures so I'm going to try and fill in the details now retrospectively. So first up the breakfast really rejuvenated and refreshed me and as I left the coast and heading back towards Preston I actually had a beneficial wind so that was good. I came into Preston at rush hour, but more by luck than, than planning. I came in on a series of cycle paths and back streets, and then this just amazing coincidence happened. I passed a friend of mine, Len Hampson. He rides with All That Club Bristol. He's from Somerton, about 20, 25 miles from where I live. He was riding Land's End John O'Groats. So I was aware that he was doing it, but I had no idea of what his progress was. And he passed me going the other way, so we sort of came back and we had a bit of a chat. It was just such an amazing coincidence. In the back streets of Preston as well. I mean, what are the odds of that? So that was a really, really lovely experience. And then the legs southwards from Preston, where there was a lot of those overlaps, I came down like the urban conurbation between Liverpool and Manchester through Warrington, Wigan, Chorley. And if you look on a map, most of the roads are going east to west, west to east, between Manchester and Liverpool. And I was heading straight down over them, north to south. So there was a lot of stopping at junctions and traffic lights and roundabouts. I I crossed it on the way up, no problem, because I had a tailwind. A lot of it seemed to be downhill. And also the traffic lights were green, there wasn't much traffic. I'd just flown through it on the Sunday night, but now coming back on the Monday uh, lunchtime and afternoon, it was just such a slog. And by five o'clock in the evening, 
I hadn't even done half my anticipated mileage. So I knew then I was going to have to have a long ride into the night to stand any chance of finishing. It's quarter to four and I'm just sat under a tree seeing out another rain shower they don't seem to last more than about five or six minutes so i've just been shot in them so i just had a power nap quite a nice um little encounter um when you deplete yourself of sleep circadian rhythms kick in and you, i i find anyway I, I get some really bad energy lows mid-afternoon and go through an energy trough lo and behold bang on quarter to three i started feeling it couldn't find anywhere to have a nap. I was looking for a bus shot or a church porch. In the end, I saw this industrial looking building in a real sun trap. I thought, hey, great, I'll go in there. And I just plonked myself down and I noticed I was right opposite a hut with a security guard in. And he came over and said to me, You're an old axe rider? And I sort of said, Yeah, are you? He sort of said, No, 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 I'm a keen cyclist. So I said to him, Oh, if I have a, a nap here for 10 minutes, he said, Yeah, yeah, sh sure. When you leave, come over and see me bike. He had this really nice renovated rally bike, six speed gold chain rings and everything. Really nice labour of love. Yeah, so I found. When I do deprive myself of sleep, I only had three hours last night, and even that was pretty poor quality. A power nap really, really does the trick. Ten minutes, and I feel right as rain now. So hopefully riding right through till midnight, one o'clock, maybe even two o'clock before I bivy tonight. I came into this one town, and I honestly do not know the name of it, because when you come in on minor roads, you don't always see the boundary signs. They're just not there. Anyway, it's a fantastic place to stop up on food at a local shop for a, a night ride. Make sure I had supplies. And also the lady said there was a chip shop down the road. So I went and got some sausages and some peas. I just couldn't stomach eating chips. And that really did the trick. It warmed me up and I think I got an energy boost from that. And all of a sudden, um, the, the road just seemed to be making progress i was no longer stopping at junctions I, I actually started picking up signs for the border areas as well oswestry and mercy and cycle route that sort of thing and it just like lifted my spirits as well so all day i felt like i was made to make a little progress and now suddenly in the evening i had some momentum and i felt like i was gaining distance so i rode through the night until 1 a.m It's 11.15 now, right in front of me, there's a gibbous moon, it's just starting to get obscured by clouds, it's about 10 degrees above the horizon, I say horizon, above some trees, I'm on a very quiet network of lanes, it's very dark, heading down towards Ludlow, I aim to try and bivy about 1, one thirty, and the reason for that is, it just makes sense to be sleeping during the coldest part of the night. It's now 1am and I'm in a really nice cosy wooden bus shelter just north of Ludlow. I've got about 96 miles back to Bath. So I'm going to be hopefully asleep in 10 minutes. So I've set my alarm for an hour and 40 minutes from now. So I always try and sleep in 90 minute chunks. That's just to less than the chance of waking up out of a deep sleep so this is my sleep system got an old space blanket it's very lightweight foil blanket it reflects a lot of heat i've got it down really to protect the sleeping mat underneath there is the x bed sleeping mat on top of it is a sole escape light bivy i've also got an x bed pillow there probably going to put on my raincoat as well just to keep me warm so I think I'm going to cool down quickly. 90 minutes sleep and I'll be on my way. So it's now 3am. I woke up at 2.40am. It's taken me about 20 minutes to get everything packed away. And I've put on some extra layers. I've got leg warmers on now. And I've got on my thermal arm warmers as well. 
So I've got a couple of hours until sunrise. And I've also got uh, 14 hours and 18 minutes to finish this ride. 96 miles back to Bath, plus I've got the 25 mile loop. Hopefully that's going to be long enough. So when I woke up from the bivvy, I actually felt much more refreshed after 90 minutes of rough sleep in a bus shelter than I had the previous evening, three hours in the travel lodge. I think the reason was the travel lodge was a little bit too warm, the bed felt too soft. It's not a complaint, it's just an observation. So I actually felt I had some momentum when I started out. And then as the sun came up, I came into Hereford and I stopped at a garage and had uh, a four quart breakfast there. So it's now 6.30, been on the road now three and a half hours since I left the bus shelter. Just in a filling station four quart, having a breakfast, bacon and cheese turnover, just wanted something hot and savoury. And also a strong coffee as well. Tip from my mate Adam Watkins, just pull the cup to one side when it dispenses the water, then you can get an extra strong cup of coffee. Hereford was quite busy but there's a fantastic network of cycle lanes that actually get you through the city with barely any traffic. There's a big climb out and then there was a drop down towards Monmouth but the road is a bit of a roller coaster before you get to Monmouth and there's one really big hill called Lang Cloudy. It's at the end of a uh, up and down, up and down, up and down stretch and then the very last up before you get to Monmouth is Lang Cloudy Hill and it's just a killer. Anybody who's ridden a Brian Chapman will know that one. So I stopped just before there at St. Wenard's Village Stores and Post Office to have a breakfast just to gather some strength and some energy. Once I passed through Monmouth, I then rode along the Wye Valley to Tintern and I knew then I was pretty confident that I was going to finish within the time allowance. And then all of a sudden, as so often happens when your confidence is quite high, I just started feeling really tired and everything was a slog after that. And as I came over the Severn Bridge, I normally felt, ah, oh, great, you know, I'm almost home now, it's less than 20 miles to go. Once I cross the A38, it's all downhill. It always feels like a lap of honour um, from the Severn Bridge back to Bath. But I had this final circuit to do when I got back to Bath, the, the Bradford on Avon, I think it's 26 mile circuit. And just the thought of doing that just mentally destroyed me. I was crawling back into Bath. So I got back to my house at 1pm. My wife was fantastic. She replenished all my water bottles. Um, just looked after me really. I dived in the shower. Realised I had quite a bad saddle sore. Stripped a lot of the weight out of my saddle bags. So the, the final circuit, the bike was a lot lighter. I got rid of all the things I didn't need. Such as my sleep system. And a lot of dirty clothes had a tin of cold baked beans that's all I really fancied I always go with my cravings and I've just been craving cold baked beans when I set off from Bath 30 minutes later I had three and a half hours to do 26 miles so barring accidents I was going to complete on time and I actually felt fantastic on that final circuit I just went from being really low to really high, I, it just so often happens on long distance rides like that. Um, even the final climb up to Kingsdown before I plunged down into Bath just felt effortless. I just don't know where that energy came from. Maybe it was the beans, I don't know. So I coasted back into Bath. I had, I think, about an hour, just under an hour of my time allowance left. Absolutely perfect as far as I'm concerned. So I finished the ride with about an hour in hand 
and for me that's perfect these days I'm not into riding fast and I always calculate my time allowance and try and finish within about an hour or so I, I like to keep an hour in hand just in case things like any punctures or mechanicals or issues in the last miles and also I don't want to be getting stressed out of traffic lights if I stop at traffic lights on the way back into Bath it's just not an issue if you've got an hour in hand so that was it Bath to Bradford on Avon and back via Blackpool Tower the second big goal of the year I timed it to coincide with Paris Press Paris because this time last year I'd chosen not to qualify enter and ride it and I was very aware that there'd be a lot of talk and enthusiasm and excitement on the internet had a lot of friends who were riding it as well so I, I'm, I've been following them I was aware that I may regret my decision so that's what this ride was about really an alternative I have to say after my end-to-end -end back in June that was so good I came back thinking I probably wouldn't do this ride and now I gradually built up my endurance again during the latter half of July and the first part of August and about a week before the ride itself my mind eventually caught up and now I was enthused about riding it again so this is the completion of the second of my two goals for the year the first one was the alternative end-to-end -end. and now I really do intend to do a lot more camping and youth hostling as usual thanks very much for watching and till next time